Hello there, Ray here, and today guys, I'd like to show you something really cool. We got some automatic farms to do with the new 1.15 bees. So the very first 1.15 snapshot did come out, and if you guys like to learn all about it, I did do a snapshot review, which will be linked below. But with it came some cool mechanics. As you can see, we got bees, we got some beehives, and we have some redstone as well. I'm going to show you guys some cool little farms you can build using the bees. And if you guys haven't noticed, I got a new skin made by Manrock just for the bees. It looks really cool. I had a lot of fun designing up these farms as well as some other ones which I'll show you guys later during our snapshot testing streams with the viewers. And that's the stream where we design stuff together with the viewers. So big thanks to everyone who came along and joined for that stream. Let's take a look at these delicious farms. So the first farm here uses a beehive and bees to collect honeycomb. So here in the chest you see we got a bunch of honeycomb from this farm here. It's really simple. All we do is have a bee nest here and the bee nest has different levels of honey which it can obtain. What will happen is the bees will go out to the flowers and they will collect nectar, come back and produce honey and they will slowly fill it up until it is level 5 which you can see over here. This currently honey level is 0 so it's completely empty. And once it's full, it's actually going to send out a signal through this comparator. So I can go ahead and put down a beehive that's already full and you can kind of see what's going to happen. So the comparator just went off and what happens is with a hive that is level 5, it's going to put off 5 redstone signals. So it's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then that's going to power this dispenser which is pointing downwards into this hive here. And it has shears inside of it and the shears are going to go out and go ahead and harvest it. Then once harvest it's going to drop out honeycombs. Now there is this weird little glitch where some of these hives get kind of glitched out. But typically once empty the bees have to go out and harvest more. Now the honeycombs do fall out. They're going to kind of fly from the center and get pushed outwards because they'll be inside of the bees nest. And what I have underneath here is a hopper minecart so that it can pick up any items that come from it. And then it's going to put it down inside of this hopper. And then that's going to be put it into this chest over here so you can get all the honeycombs that you ever need. Now currently there's not too many uses for honeycomb, but you can use it to craft up an artificial bee nest, which is also known as a beehive. So you can see the ingredients there. This will produce one beehive. Now beehives are supposed to act the same way as bee nest, except currently they're kind of broken. I'm sure they'll fix them in later snapshots. Now that's why I have a bee nest here instead of a beehive. The bees just don't seem to be able to really use it the same way that they are using the nest. It's a really simple device, as you can see, and not very much redstone. Now it does use durability from the shears, so if you want to get a lot of bee comb, you can go ahead and add some storage with some more shears on top of it. The shears are relatively cheap, as it's just two iron ingots and you're going to get 238 uses out of them. And each use is going to produce three honeycombs, so you get a lot out of just one shear. And you can build this up anywhere where there's some flowers around, or you can just place some flowers near it as well. And the bees will go out and harvest nectar and go back inside. So right now the bees went ahead and put one layer of honey inside of this. You can see it just went to a signal strength of one. The bees go in for a little bit and they'll stay in there as they add in the honey and then they'll eventually come back out. Now there only can be a maximum of three bees inside at a time working, but once they leave to get more nectar then other bees, like these bees out here, are currently waiting to get inside. As you see they have nectar and pollen on them, but they're unable to go inside because it's currently full. So when one leaves, you see like one guy left and one guy just went back in again. So it's okay if you have extra bees around, but only three can go inside. Now to get the bee nest to start up this type of farm, you just need to use a silk touch pick on the hive, and that way you could obtain it as a Item. Now this is going to make the bees mad, so make sure you leave, and after a while they will become passive again so they won't attack you. Now this farm over here looks exactly the same as that one, and essentially it's pretty much the same thing, except this one is going to go ahead and give us a bottle of honey, or honey bottle. So that's this here, you can see it, and the way you obtain this is by having a bunch of glass bottles inside of a dispenser pointing down into the nest, and essentially the same thing is going to happen. When the nest has reached a level of 5, meaning that it's full, the powers go around up through here and then power this dispenser, which is going to activate these glass bottles, which are going to go in and go ahead and scoop up the honey. Then the glass bottle normally would go back inside of the dispenser, except it's full of glass bottles. So instead it's just going to drop in front of it. And from here we hurry pick it up with the hopper minecart before it kind of flies out and ends up somewhere else. The hopper minecart will take it and put it into the hopper and then put it down into the chest. And as you can see, these are unstackable, so they all stack one at a time. And you only get one glass bottle of honey per harvest of the beehive. So it's going to take quite a bit of storage to hold them all. Now these are actually used in brewing and even though they look like very similar to other types of bottles which you can stick inside of a brewer, you cannot actually stick these in a brewer whatsoever. 
Now currently the only uses for these is that you can craft them down into sugar, they'll produce three sugar, and you'll get the glass bottle back once you convert it over to sugar. The other use they have is that you can actually drink this and it'll provide you three hunger, but you can drink this even if your hunger is completely full. So see how my hunger bar doesn't show them hungry whatsoever, so normally you couldn't eat food, but you can still eat this honey. It takes a little while to eat. Once you do, you just have gained more saturation, even though your bar is already full, and you'll be left with the glass bottle afterwards. But if you do drink this when you are hungry, it'll give you three haunches. So notice that I'm back up to almost full. So it's kind of cool that you can eat this even though you're not hungry. This is similar to like your notch apples or like the coarse fruit. So if you look at the data on my player here, you can see stuff like my food level is 19. So this is right here. You can see it's just barely not 20. So before I drink the bottle of honey, my food saturation level was at 9.6. And this is like your internal saturation level. And once that is low, then it's going to start taking hunger away. And then after I drank it, the food saturation level was set to 19.2. The maximum saturation that you can have is 20. Let's compare this with a normal golden apple. So currently my saturation is zero because my guy is hungry. I'll go ahead and eat it. And we check it again. Now my level is 9.6. And let's see what a notch apple does when I eat that. So you can eat this when you're not hungry as well. So now it's set to 19.2. So it seems that both the gold apples as well as the honey bottle all provide about a 9.6 saturation. This is actually really good for people that do like PvP or other intense stuff like a lot of sprint jumping. As once you have went ahead and ate one of these, you'll be able to do quite a bit of activities before your hunger nonches will go down and you won't be able to sprint once again. Or get the regen effect from your hunger being high. But like apples, it is unstackable, so it might not be as handy to carry around with you when you need to use it. Now the last runstone device that we have is an automatic water bottle filler. And it's very simple. It uses the same mechanics as that one over here, where we have glass bottles inside of a dispenser, except we have it pointing into a water source. This just happens to be a waterlogged source here. And what happens when you power this is it's going to shoot out a bottle and it's going to scoop up some water with it that normally returns a water bottle into this dispenser. Now water bottles are unstackable where glass bottles are stackable, but since the dispenser is full, it cannot take the water bottle, so it's just going to drop it in front. And here we have a hopper which is going to pick it up and then it's going to put all the water bottles into this chest down below. And we have an on switch right here. We're just going to power this piston which is going to lift this observer into making an observer clock. And this is going back and forth and power this dispenser. So it's just powering it, dropping up, the water bottle is directly in front of it. And this is actually getting picked up by the hopper underneath, but it does take a lot of storage as it quickly fills up just like that. But it is able to actually keep up with this machine, the hopper is. So if I go ahead and put in a new chest and we turn this on, you see that there is not like a whole bunch of water bottles just sitting here. They're actually being picked up by the hopper and put it down into this chest down below. This is really nice. So now you don't have to go ahead and take all your water bottles and go up to a water source manually, holding down right click and having the water bottles fill up your chest, which you're going to use for your auto brewer. Instead, you can just have some storage over a dispenser and then make this little device here. And then you can put all your glass bottles inside of the chest and then they just automatically fill up whenever you need them inside of your brewing system. Because it's a lot easier to store glass bottles than it is to store bottles of water. Now before you could automate the process just by having the player sit there AFK holding right click or you could get water bottles from AFK fishing as I have shown you guys in the past like in my blaze farm which uses water bottles to kill them. And then this can be hooked directly up into a witch farm where you can get tons of glass bottles very easily. I really like this new mechanic with the dispensers and the water bottles. And I wish they would actually add some more different uses for the dispenser. Like currently dispensers can actually dispense out fish in a bucket. So if I put that inside of there, you can actually get them to drop it. You can actually have them pick it back up again. So if I dispense this once again, it's going to pick up the water, but it's not going to pick up the fish. I feel like they should make it do both of those. I also think that dispensers should automatically be able to fill cauldrons with water. So like if you had water here and you dispensed it, it'd be cool if you could just fill this up with water. Now if you guys have any cool ideas which you think dispensers also do, tell me down in the comments. I'd love to hear them. Now we did notice some bugs during our testing stream, like with the hives that are constantly being filled, like this hive here, will never empty. It's like glitched out. So you can get like infinite amounts of materials from it, which I don't think is intended. There's also some weird stuff like when this hive will fill up and it gets powered and it will remove all the honeycomb from it. Sometimes a bee will immediately come out of it each time and then vanish once again. 
Here's another bug we just seen having right now, which is when bees go into some of these nests or hives, like this one here, when they come out, they get placed around it. And sometimes they place themselves inside of blocks, like this bee did. He just placed inside of this shark box here, and he actually died because it suffocated him. Here comes another one. So he just came out. You see that? Yeah, he just was... He put himself right inside this block, so I think they should make it so that the bees will only come out if there is a safe spot to come out of. Otherwise, they end up taking damage and they eventually die. And during my snapshot review video, I said that they couldn't be put on leads. And that was actually my mouse that was broken. For some reason, my right click was actually doing two clicks instead of one, which was causing the lead to attach and unattach very quickly. So I wasn't able to see them being held by a lead. But you can lead them by leads, so they're just like most other passive mobs. You go ahead and collect all these guys and you can have a whole bunch of bees that you can carry around and I guess if you want to try to get bees into your hive this is one way to do it if you don't get them inside of the hive when you take it down initially because a lot of times when you tear down the nest they will go ahead and come out of the nest as soon as you tear down and be angry at you. You guys also told me that when these bees are on leads go inside of their homes they'll actually duplicate the leads similar to what we see with mobs going through nether portals the leads will get duplicated and you can attach them to a fence post so if we put a fence post like right here, you can go ahead and attach them to it. So all the bees are hooked onto there. There you see it. A bee just went inside of the hive and the lead broke off. But this is early stages of the snapshot, so they're sure to fix these minor bugs. It's also most likely that they will go ahead and add some more uses for stuff like the honeycomb as well as the honey bottle as the versions continue on. I've never seen them actually introduce so much different mechanics in just the very first snapshot. I've really been having a lot of fun playing around with the bees and I hope you guys also enjoy these little mini farms that come with them. So you can automatically collect tons of honeycombs as well as honey bottles and also water bottles. So if you guys did enjoy this video, be sure to go ahead and show it with a like and share it with someone else so they can learn about bees and all the cool stuff you can do with them. If you haven't subscribed already, be sure to go ahead and do that because we have a bunch of more farms that we have designed during the streams which we'd like to show you guys. But if you'd like to see those streams right now, the streams are archived, so you can go back and watch what we did during them. If you'd like to build these mini farms up in your very own world, I will provide the world download to this down in the description below. And I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye